Hey, welcome back to the last video in the public Wi-Fi series. Thanks everybody for sticking in there. I appreciate it. I hope you've learned something. This last video, we're just going to do two setups and we're going to do a couple of the scenarios that we covered. If you want to see more or you've got questions, please post it in the comments. Uh, thanks to everybody who comments, everybody who emails me, uh, everybody who reaches out. I appreciate it. It really makes this fun. It makes it worthwhile. Thank you to all my uh, consulting customers that have come along too. I appreciate that. And I hope you found my services to be valuable. If you've got any questions about public Wi-Fi after this, please you know, put them in the comments, email me, reach out. The first thing we're going to do here, as you can see, we've got our controller up. And right now, I'm going to go ahead and log in. And we'll see, I just plugged the lab USG back in. And I plugged in the lab switch, so it looks like those came back up. You can see here that our uh, UAP LR that we were using is not um, online. I'm actually going to pause the video and I'm going to bring that online so I can forget it. Hold on just a second. Okay, our lab UAP LR is booting, so as soon as that comes online, we'll forget that. But the first thing we're going to do... Um, is we're going to take a look at how we've got our network set up. So our USG is going to be 192.168.3.1. Our switch is 192.168.3.6. We're going to adopt this new UAP AC or the uh, APAC light. You can see our lab UAP LR is coming back online right now. It's provisioning. And the reason we're going to forget this guy is because when we do our edge router video, we are going to use this guy and, and plug him into um, directly into the edge router. And while we're waiting for this to adopt, you've heard me talking about my VMware VCP certification. I am still studying for that, but I have scheduled the exam, so now crunch time's on. If any of you out there in Radio Land have ever taken that exam, you'll understand why that they say there's a 30% pass rate for the first time you take the exam. It is bare. All right, looks like this guy's almost done provisioning. Yeah, this guy's still adopting. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video real quick, and I'm actually going to plug in our edge router. Uh, that we're going to use after we do this setup. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do on this guy is I'm going to name him. And let's see, what do I want to call this guy? Uh, how about Lab APAC Light? We'll go ahead and save that. All right. Our lab UAP LR is on, so we're going to bring this guy up. And we're going to forget this guy. So he's going to go away in a minute. He's going to start flashing. He's going to reset the factory defaults. All right, so within our lab, uh, so the Howe family uh, AP that you see here, the AP Pro that's in the 192.168.66.101 network, that's in a different subnet in the lab and that is one of our main APs. Um, so we can just kinda we'll just ignore this guy for now because that is in production. It's got lots of devices connected to it. So the three devices that we are going to be dealing with are the USG, the switch, and the APAC light. And we can run the scenario two different ways. We can run this as we're setting up public Wi-Fi and these are the only three pieces of equipment. There's no production equipment behind it. Um, but that'd be pretty pretty straightforward. So what we're gonna do is um, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set up an entirely new network just for the Wi-Fi so that this could be mixed production and public Wi-Fi. So let's get started on that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our settings and our networks. And we're gonna create a new network. And this is going to be called public Wi-Fi. And it's going to be a guest. And we'll 
make this guy 192, 168, 2, 254, and we'll do a, an entire class C. And let's use VLAN 254. That looks good, so we'll go ahead and save that. I'm going to go ahead and delete this cor the, this plant uh, corporate. That's from some of the earlier videos. Go back to our devices. And looks like we're provisioning. Now what we've done with our network is we've created this as a guest network, so it provides that isolation. And we are going to go uh, one step further here in a minute and we will create the public Wi-Fi wireless network. We'll associate it with VLAN 254 and we'll make it a guest network. So let's do that right now. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is this yup because I'm going to get rid of that. Actually I'm going to get rid of the Willy public Wi-Fi. And we're going to add a wireless network, and we're just going to call it public Wi-Fi. Guest policies will be applied. Be VLAN 254. Default user group, if you remember that, it's going to be 1024, so they get a meg up and down. That all looks good, so we'll go ahead and save that. Let's hop out here see if everything has been everything's reprovisioning that's that's fantastic I'm gonna have to come in here because this guy doesn't have the VLANs and we're gonna have to go in here and we are gonna have to disable uh, that on the, the 2 gig and we're going to have to disable it on the 5 gig because the uh, Howe family does not, that AP does not have the VLAN attached to it. That's just everything behind this USG. So, and speaking of, this PC is behind the USG. So, let's see. So, there we go. We can ping that layer 3. Uh, interface that we created that's fantastic so it looks like everything has been provisioned so now what we're gonna do is we are actually going to I'm gonna unplug my PC bring up the wireless networks and we are gonna connect to the uh, the public Wi-Fi and see what it looks like okay so um, we unplugged the wire and we did connect to the public Wi-Fi and you can see that uh, looks like the, the throttling is working there. Um, that's a, probably a pretty large uh, picture. And you can see that it wants us to enter a voucher code. So um, that's that means that this part of it's working. So I'm going to grab a voucher real quick and we'll put that in and we'll connect and we'll see what kind of uh, things we can do since, since this is a guest network all the way around. Okay, we've got a voucher. We're going to paste that guy in there. I went out and created a couple special vouchers just for this. And look, it redirected us to the uh, YouTube channel. So that is fantastic. That means we are online and we are ready to go. But let's bring up, uh, let's go somewhere else here. Just bring up my website or another tab. Looks like that throttling is working pretty well. But let's bring this up, our command prompt. And let's take a look. So uh, our IP address is 192.168. 254.7 and our gateway is 254.1 but we know that the DNS server is 192.168.66.10 I do believe let's see 
how it's doing that. No, so the DNS is being handled by the USG, so it's, um, but let's see if we can ping anything in that 66 network. So here's our guest control kicking in. So we can't get to 66.10, which is the unified controller internally. We can't get to 66.1, which is an edge router. And uh, no, um, which means we're not going to be able to get to anything inside of of Unify. So this thing is uh, is doing its job. So that's it for the Unify side. So I am going to undo this real quick, and we're going to hop into the edge router and set it up on the edge router real quick. Be right back. Okay, so I've got all of the lab gear unhooked so you are going to see um, in just a minute you're going to see this kind of kind of go away start freaking out here and we've unplugged back into an edge router so we're going to hop into that guy once again do not use ubnt ubnt in production 2.1. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to make sure that we put the Unify controller in here. And what that's going to do when I plug that access point into E3 uh, or 4 is it's going to automatically send it over to the, the controller to um, we should see it pop back up with a different IP and it should should want to be adopted. So we'll see how that works out in just a minute. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to port 4. Let's see. And we're going to go to PoE and we're going to turn this guy on 24 volt. Yes. Save that. And the power's on. So I'm going to plug in our, our access point. And we're going to wait for that to, to boot up. You can see in Unify, it's got 192.168.2.43. So now this is edge router set up along with a Unify access point. So you can see it's on port 4. It's got 100 meg. Came up. We are going to go ahead and adopt this. Now remember, our public Wi-Fi... VLAN was 254 so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to add an interface and we're going to add a VLAN and we're going to add it on switch 0 and it's going to be 254 call this guy public Wi-Fi we'll enter an IP address 192.168.254.1 slash 24 and we'll go ahead and save that back we had a little bit of a unexpected technical glitch for some reason the unify controller decided to stop responding so had to reboot that real quick um, for the record I haven't rebooted that thing in months so and I typically don't have to reboot it I've, I've got one that the only time I reboot it is when I do when I do upgrades so not exactly sure what happened, but we're back online. You can see we're connected uh, with the Unify APLR. So we're going to go ahead and give this guy a name. Go ahead and save that. And let's take a look at the configuration. Look at our, there's our public Wi-Fi right there. It is enabled and it has the VLAN and our edge router has the corresponding VLAN so let's uh, let's unplug the PC and find out what happens here I will uh, I will not break away we'll see what what happens so PC just kicked over to wireless 
It says it's not connected, but there are things available. So we'll click on public Wi-Fi and we'll connect. Now we connected with a voucher the last time and it says we're connected. So our voucher is probably still good. Let's try to release that IP. I don't believe that that's... Oh, you know what? Aha! Hold on just a second. We forgot something. I think... I think we forgot to create a DHCP pool. Look at that! Doesn't want a space in there. Now it wants 0 slash 24. Our range is going to start at 192, 168, 254.100, and we'll stop it at 192, 168, 254.110. Router will be 192, 168, 254.1. We'll make the DNS 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And we'll go ahead and save that. So now we've got 11 IPs to work with. So now we're going to come back over. We're going to unplug the machine again. Okay, it says we're on the internet let's see what happens and now that we actually have an IP in that subnet the internet is working so let's take a look at what our IP is so now it were 192.168.254.100 and this is the um, tagged as a guest network so look what happens when I try to ping that 192.168.254.1 that access point is doing that segregation uh, same thing should happen when we try to go to 66.10 blocked 66.1 blocked so you can see there it is working and I think that's gonna wrap it up for now I know we did kind of a mishmash of this and this video is a little longer than the videos that I usually create but, you know, we did a Unify setup and we've done an Edge Router setup. You can take some of the other videos that we've created, learn some of those things that I show you, and put those all together to have the, you know, not I, I'm not going to say the perfect public Wi-Fi deployment, but I'm going to say one that's as secure as we can make it with what is available to us. So I appreciate you hanging in there. If you like the video, please subscribe, please give a thumbs up, please comment, please share. Please stick around this week. Um, I am going to have a couple videos, and they are not as... Uh, they're not... They don't deal with public Wi-Fi, but they do deal with a couple Ubiquiti products we haven't looked at yet. And I've got lots of stuff in the lab I'm itching to show you, so please stick around. Please subscribe, please share, and we'll see you at the next video.